Good evening, everyone. Thanks for going to get started now. Um, I want to welcome you to the scoping meeting for the proposed Northeast Southwest connector, arterial connector. Uh, thank you for being here tonight. My name is Jonathan Brickman. I'm a principal planner at Flora, also the project manager for this proposed project. Uh, I'll take a moment and just check in to see if we have Spanish speakers. We do have an uh, interpreter tonight, so uh, I'll be speaking Spanish uh, at this moment. Hola, buenas noches. Bienvenidos a la reunión del propuesto camino llamado Noroeste, Suroeste, Conector. Gracias por estar aquí esta noche. Tengo una pregunta antes de empezar. ¿Hay alguien que quiere hablar y escuchar en español? Si quieres eso, por favor, leva la mano. Okay, uh, just looking at the room, I didn't see anyone raise their hand for Spanish uh, speaking services, so uh, thank you for that moment. I just have a few housekeeping items, and I will turn it over uh, to Aaron Harwing, our presenter tonight. Uh, so when you came in, we had a sign-in sheet. Uh, if any of you passed by without filling out the sign-in sheet, it's our way to ensure that you get on our notification list for future meetings, for documents to review. So please stop by the sign-in sheet if you haven't already. I also wanted to note that uh, this meeting is being video recorded tonight, just to, to let folks know that. Also, uh, housekeeping-wise, there's uh, bathrooms down the hall on the left. It'd be your right if you're facing me. Uh, so the hallway by the drinking fountains, uh, that's how to get to the bathroom. We also have uh, refreshments in the back, water and cookies. And without further ado, I'm going to introduce Aaron Hartway. He is with Denise Duffy and Associates and uh, one of our consultants preparing, uh, who will be preparing this environmental impact report. Thank you. Thank you, Jonathan, and thank you, all, for coming on your probably night off and you're dedicating your evening to learning about this project and providing some early input on what should be addressed in the environmental analysis for this project. So I'm going to walk you through our meeting tonight. I'm going to start by introducing our, thank you, uh, hopefully the lights are okay, I just want to be able to, uh, thank you, you able to see this slide. Um, We'll go around the room, there's a lot of staff here to answer questions and help facilitate the process this evening. So I'll go around the room and do that. I'm going to give you an overview of the proposed project and the environmental review process that's being initiated today or this month. And the purpose of tonight's scoping meeting. We're going to open it up for public comments and then we'll break out and um, we'll start our small groups this evening and we'll do a, a short style discussion. Again, I'm Erin Harwin, I'm a senior project manager with Denise Duffy & Associates. I've been there about 18 years, and I'm a local um, firm, small firm, private firm in Monterey. And I have a background in biology, and I've been working on the former Fort Ord for, for many, many years on a number of projects. So I'm going to start clockwise and see if I catch everybody that's here to, to help out tonight so you can see those familiar faces. This is Andy Hunter from Watson Engineers. He's the civil lead civil engineer and um, lead project manager on the project. There, of course, you met Jonathan. And then over there, by the door we have Robert Norris from Fora, Peter Seed from Fora, Michael Kulamar from Fora, John Giffen from Fora, and Frederick Venter from Kimley Horn, our traffic engineer, Sherry Damon from Fora, we have Matt Johnson from Denise Stephan Associates. We have Heidi over there in the back at the front desk with Ikuyo from Fora, and of course we have Mary Israel from Fora, and Ashley Quackenbush from DDNA. So we have quite a few people here to help you out today, and um, specifically uh, Andy and, and Frederick will be able to answer some of the engineering questions that, that might come up. Uh, I want to make sure you guys know about all the materials available. Did everyone get what they needed at the front desk? Copies of the NOP maps, speaker cards, comment sheets. If you need anything, raise your hands or attract the attention of any of our staff and they'll be happy to help you. So I'm going to go through the presentation and I will take questions at the end. Um, there's a lot of people here tonight so I just want to make sure to, to get through this. So 
So the background of this project goes, it goes back a long way. It goes back to the 1997 reuse plan. Back in that 1997 corridor-based reuse plan, a transportation network was laid out based on a 1997 transportation study done in coordination with the Transportation Agency of Monterey County, or Monterey County, sorry, um, or TAMSI. And that reminds me to remind you that if I say any strange acronyms and break out into acronym language to raise your hand and ask for clarification, because I'll do that, I promise. So, um, this transportation network in the 97 reuse plan identified a number of segments and improvements to accommodate vehicle trips within and outside of the former Fort Ord. A couple of those segments, the east side road segment and the giggling inner garrison connector segment are incorporated into our proposed project alignment which you see on your table this evening. So the Fort Ord Reuse Authority, FORA, they have a development and resource management plan, the DROOP. That's a good acronym, right? Um, that requires FORA to provide funding, for its fair share funding, for on-site and off-site and regional transportation improvements. On-site refers to a facility, a transportation or tra transit improvement located within the boundaries of the board, which is what this project is um, meaning to attain to accommodate traffic within a home corridor. So 20 years, it's been a long time. Fora over this time period has been working with the Transportation Agency for Monterey County, again TAMSI, to monitor current and projected traffic service levels in the area. We've completed a number of studies. The first one was done in 2005, and based on their reassessment of land use plans and then the way development was, was working, they suggested a number of revisions to the transportation network, two of which, um, relevant to this project, was the rerouting of a conceptual alignment for East Side Road, and also the elimination of the Highway 68 bypass from this um, transportation network. So two, two big things happened back in 2005. In about December, <coughs> excuse me, 2009, before a board approved the mid-year capital improvement program and prioritized the East Side Parkway or the East Side Road project, and in about 2010, Monterey County renamed it because it's been reborn as this rerouted um, conceptual alignment, East Side Parkway. And that's when Andy and I got involved doing some preliminary design and environmental analysis of this um, alignment, this rerouting, back in 2011-2012. And there is a copy of the preliminary environmental checklist, the initial study completed for the East Side Parkway um, back in 2012, available online on the FOR website. So after that, TAMSI and FORA completed a um, another transportation study in 2017, which also included this rerouting of East Side Parkway. So, why we've been on hold for so long? Well, we, we lacked uh, funding. The recession hit, and there was uh, not, not the projections needed to, to get this project off the ground and, and finish the design plans and environmental review. So it sat for a while, and based on recent projections, FORA has reinitiated the environmental review process, which is why we're here tonight. So back in December of 2017, we um, were contracted with, with FORA to get this um, environmental review process off the ground. And because the times have changed since 2012, we were looking to uh, reach out to the public and solicit input on the goals and objectives of this, this project and figure out the best alignment to, to meet these goals and objectives. So we met um, at a couple of community meetings back in 2017 and drafted a set of goals and objectives to bring to the FORA board for approval and discussion. And based on stakeholder comments, public comments, um, FORA board comments, revisions were made and then finally approved in March. So based on those goals and objectives, those approved goals and objectives, we initiated a preliminary screening analysis. Before I get into the screening analysis, I wanted to uh, 
not read, sorry, this lovely project purpose we have here. The purpose of the proposed project is to make improvements to the on-site former four-door transportation system, and you remember on-site means within the former boundaries, necessary to reduce future traffic congestion along Highway 1, 12th Street, which is now Engine Parkway, Blanca Road, and the Del Monte 2nd Avenue General Demore Boulevard corridor, while maintaining value in recreational, cultural, and natural resources, consistent with the reuse plan, final environmental impact report, and the DREMP, the D Development and Resource Management Plan. So that's the underlying purpose of this project, and it's supported by 20 um, project objectives needed to, um, that, that were identified to support the implementation of this project purpose. As I said, with this um, set of approved goals and objectives, we set out to identify and recommend a project to be analyzed as the proposed project in the environmental review process. We wanted to make sure it met most of the approved goals and objectives and is potentially feasible. This is, um, it was also, the screening analysis was also a first attempt to identify um, preliminary project alternatives. And I do say first step, this is not the last step um, this document in determining uh, project alternatives. We have uh, you here tonight to provide input on project potential project alternatives. We have um, technical studies to be conducted. We have a, a long road ahead to, to guide us to, to the ultimate project um, for approval. So I'm going to walk you through this screening analysis, and you all have maps on your table that show. Um, the results of um, the screening analysis. So the first thing we did is we wanted to um, create a list of potential projects. And then those that passed the first tier had to meet the underlying purpose, which I just read to you on a couple street screens ago. The second tier is we need to determine whether they're potentially feasible. If they weren't feasible and we couldn't construct them, they were they were thrown out. So we looked at <coughs> a number of legal, regulatory, technical, economic, and environmental feasibility factors, and specifically looking at whether we could acquire the necessary right-of-way, that's the ROW acronym there, and avoid impacts to the Fort Worth National Monument, and uh, avoid excess environmental permitting issues. So those that passed the first and second tier made it to the third tier. And of those that passed, we looked at three additional environmental factors. Whether we could avoid widening Reservation Road from East Garrison Drive to Watkins Gate Road. I'm sorry, you could avoid widening? Avoid widening it, yes. Because that would result in increased impacts. Um, whether we could avoid widening Inner Garrison from Schoonover to East Garrison Drive. And whether we could avoid the conservation easement parcel, which you can pretty clearly see about, um, I'll show you on the map in just a moment. So, we came up with 41 potential projects. And going through that tiered analysis, first and second tiers, we made it to um, four projects that were analyzed in the third tier. And those four alignments are shown in different colors on your, on your map, on your table. There's a blue line, an orange line, a yellow line, and a pink line. The orange alignment was recommended as the proposed project. The other three potential alignments that are shown on your map are suggested to be considered as um, alternatives in the environmental analysis. We also heard from the public a number of different um, potential projects um, that couldn't quite make it on their own to, to meet our underlying purpose, but could be additive to our proposed project. And those included increasing carpool opportunities, replacing stop signs and signals on General Jim Moore with roundabouts, um, constructing park and ride lots and shuttle and bus systems. So those we're going to carry forward as well as, as potential alternatives to see which, which of those we can add on to our proposed project. So. I have a better laser pointer than last night. Um, just to give you an idea of what we're talking about, all four potential projects share this 
connector from Gidling Road intersection down to the Eucalyptus um, Parker Flats cutoff. <coughs> And we, we did hear some comments um, last night and, and also tonight. We did zoom, on, zoom in on these maps, but we do have some aerial photos so you can see the bigger picture, the regional, regional um, locations of, of how this would tie into the regional network. So the first thing we wanted to do, and we heard from the public, was to look at an alternative that utilized the existing roadway system to the maximum extent feasible. So we took this 8th Avenue inner garrison line and went down to connect to existing roadway here and out Watkins Gate. And that really maximized our use of existing roadways. However, it's not entirely clear we would be able to acquire right of way. So this pink line also maximizes the use of the existing roadway network, it follows Gibling, connects out to Watkins Gate. But it also goes through a lot of habitat management areas, which are shown in green. Can you define what you mean when you say it's not clear that you can get uh, a white way? Yes, I will get to questions at the end, and I will put that on my list. Okay, Bill? Let me, um, let me get through this and, and walk you through, and we'll, we'll get to those details. So let me just show you some property lines, and you can understand. So we have a CSUV property here in blue. The green areas depict habitat management areas, which are defined by the forward habitat management plan and are being considered as future uh, habitat management areas also in the forward habitat conservation plan. So over here is this garrison, over here is the campus core, the veterans cemetery down here, and we have a future NPC parcel down here, and again, forward national monument over here. So we're really trying to stay within this gradient, not impacting too much over here, and trying to stay um, out of the campus core up in here. So that's why these are focused the way they are. So this yellow line identifies the 2012 preliminary designs that we constructed and analyzed. It also utilizes some existing roadway, but it also goes through habitat. Um, actually, it avoids the habitat management areas to a larger extent. And then we have the orange alignment, excuse me, with um, most of it being new roadway. And again, I'll take some more questions at the end. So here's the proposed alignment. And I'll walk you through some of the proposed components. So the project is about four and a half miles long. It will be a two-lane arterial. A two-lane arterial. It'll include a number of intersection improvements at Parker Flats Cutoff, down here starting at the, the connection with Eucalyptus, over here on Parker Flats Road an extension and improvement of Giggling Road. And then up here at Co, no, Ord, sorry, Ord. And then also at Watkins Gate. It will include a number of um, bicycle and pedestrian facilities. We might need to um, relocate and install new utility um, utilities. And recreational improvements. Those might include trailheads, trail crossings. So that, um, is what I just went through. Sorry, this is a pointer to start being insane. So we have a number of project documents on the forest homepage, and also uh, this project has its own website. So you can access the FORA homepage at FORA.org, or you can um, access the project site at FORA.org connector. We have an email notification list, um, always in progress. You can sign up to be added to that um, here tonight on the sign-in sheet or anytime by contacting connector at FORA.org. We have also prepared a community engagement plan, which outlines all the, um, and there's a copy, thank you, Mary, 
on the back table if anyone wants to take a look. It outlines all the opportunities for public involvement and participation and the timeline and anticipated um, schedule for those, those events. The preliminary project screening analysis that I just described is also available on the website and there's a copy in the back. Thank you, Mary. And of course, the base reuse plan and a number of uh, all the transportation studies I discussed tonight are available online. So why are we here tonight? I wanted to describe a little bit about the California Environmental Quality Act, its purpose, and the process that we'll, um, we're initiating this evening. The purpose of CEQA is to inform governmental decision makers and the public of the potential environmental impacts of a project. It requires you to identify ways to avoid and reduce environmental damage. It requires you to prevent significant damage to the environment by making changes to your project, by looking at project alternatives and also um, mitigation measures, and requires public disclosure so that you know why your government agency, why your decision makers are making the decision that they're making. And of course, public participation, facilitation and support of that. The Florida Reuse Authority is going to be the lead agency for our CEQA, the California Environmental Quality Act document. We have decided to prepare an environmental impact report, which is the highest level, that's an EIR, it's the highest level of environmental documentation um, as part of the CEQA process. It requires you to disclose your environmental impacts and mitigation measures to reduce and avoid those. Most importantly, it requires a comprehensive alternatives analysis for, the, for, for your project. So we initiated the notice, uh, EIR process with a notice of preparation, which was issued back um, about 10, 10 days ago um, on August 24th. And it in, in, uh, initiated a 30-day comment period where you have the opportunity so, to submit comments on what you think um, should be addressed in the environmental analysis. So that comment period closes on September 25th. After that comment period closes, we will take your comments, we will uh, incorporate them into the EIR and make sure that those topics are addressed in our technical studies and the overall analysis in the document. We'll prepare a draft EIR, which will come out to you and you'll get notified, notified, notified on, on its release um, through our uh, website and our email list, and that will um, initiate a 45-day public review period in which you, we will be holding community workshops and we will also present the findings and notify the forum board at that time. And that's anticipated to be about April of next year. So then we take all our public comments and we revise um, the document as needed. We will uh, prepare responses to your comments and we'll publish a final EIR, which will again be released for public review prior to the public hearings, which will be held about November 2019 to make a decision on the project. So, as you can see, we're here. We're very early in the process. So our purpose today is to solicit comments from you. What do you want to see analyzed in this environmental impact report, the EIR? What environmental issues or concerns do you have? Do you have any reasonable alternatives or mitigation measures that could assist in reducing environmental impacts? Do you have other issues related to the, to the content of the EIR that you want to see addressed? That's what we're looking for tonight. There are a lot of topics in the um, CEQA checklist that, that need to be addressed. This is um, pretty much all of them, and we're anticipating addressing all of them, um, and a heads up that the topics in the checklist are also being updated by the state, so there might, there might be some changes, but at a minimum, there will be this. Um, everything from aesthetics to utilities. And um, a question from last night, we will be posting this presentation online so you can take a look at the topics and help it inform you on when you submit your comments. So tonight, we wanna hear um, what you have to say. We, you can provide oral comment, you can provide written comments, um, all the way through 
bring comments all the way through to September 25th. Again, as, as I said, all of those comments will be summarized and included in the EIR and addressed in each topical section. So I'm going to keep this up on the screen so that you can see all the different ways that um, you have to provide comment. Again, verbal comments today, comment cards, uh, written comments on comment cards tonight, email comments to connector at fora.org, or you can um, snail mail, that's still a real thing, um, to Jonathan at Fora. And thank you again for your interest and participation. What we're going to do now, let me just make sure. What we're going to do now is open it up for public comment. We have a lot of people here tonight. Because the comment period extends until September 25th, but we only have tonight to do our charrette. What I'd like to do is make sure we have a, a stopping point and public comment, just because oral comment, we, we're not, we, I don't want to limit you, but I do want to make sure that we um, get to the charrette portion. It was um, a fabulous opportunity last night to get the feedback that we did, and it was a very productive um, charrette. So I wanted to really focus on that portion. So it's. That clock is four minutes fast, by the way. Um, I think what we'll do, if you would like to provide oral comments, raise your hand if you haven't turned in a speaker card, and Ashley will be collecting speaker cards, and we'll let everyone come up here and provide uh, comments for three minutes, and we will then, um, sorry, Fred, hold on one sec. Um, and then at 7.15, I think we'll break and start our short portion. So it'll be first come, first serve on oral comments, but again, you're not limited. It's not the end all be all. You can mail them in. So raise your hand if you need comments, uh, or if you want to make oral comments, ask you a and, and then, yep, and I will do um, question and answer now. I will start with, I'll start with Bill, since he was first. Actually, I'll start with you, Tom. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, my, questions, my question's a simple one on, on the presentation. Um, the far western end of the proposed alignment arterial road, why would you propose not just to cut it in right at West Camp and Watkins Gate? Why would they want to spend money to be able to, I mean, I don't want that to happen, but why, it doesn't make any intuitive sense to me why you want to build in an undeveloped area of Fort Ward about 400 yards away from Watson Gate. Now, it, it just doesn't make any sense. Right? Now, that's maybe three quarters of a mile, but that's probably, I, I'm not an engineer, but I would think a million dollars is unreasonable. Why wouldn't you just cut in at, at West Camp and Watkins Gate? That's a great question. Why don't I bring up the map and we can talk about this because I don't want this. So Tom is referring to this portion of the alignment down here, correct? So there's a pond right here, and there's East Garrison community there. We were trying to attempt to avoid um, traffic impacts and noise impacts and other impacts into the East Garrison facility and um, shoot down a little bit this way to meet up with Watkins Gate instead of that. So um, it's a pick your poison type of situation, whether impacts go there or impacts go to the other side. But you're so, solid on that. You're solid that, 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 that the arterial road will not cut in. To Watkins Gate in West Camp. So Tom There's just asked. No plan to do that. Tom just asked if um, we're solid on, on our decision on this alignment. No, we haven't done the technical analyses. We haven't done the alternatives analysis. Nothing is set in stone. This is what we're. This is our starting point. And then it's important for everyone to understand why you're here tonight is to offer us um, alternatives, other ideas. You know, although we came up with 41 projects. All the other opportunities out there. I can't think of them all on my own. Because so, you can understand the implications of these garrison people that if you, if you do cut in at West Camp and Watkins Gate. Right, right. Again, um, this is a complicated project with a lot of potential impacts. And where you place it, you get an impact somewhere and an impact somewhere else. So um, thank you for that comment and question. Thank you. And
And Bill? then how will it affect the project? Question one. Question two, what different entities must approve the project? For example, it appears as if Monterey County has to approve it. Who makes the decision on the project? And has Tansy participated in those projects so far? Okay, so those questions are, what happens when forest sunsets? What happens to forest with this project to forest sunsets? The next one was, who um, makes the decision on the project? And the third one was, I missed your second one, Bill. Well, I said, what different entities must approve? Oh, what different project? entities must approve yeah, yeah. the project and who decides on the project? And then the last one was Tansy. So as I mentioned, I'll start with the last one first. As I mentioned, um, Fora is responsible to coordinate with Tansy on um, updating their, their fee allocation and their nexus analysis. and. Um, of course, we are coordinating with TAMC and a number of other responsible and trustee agencies, which leads to your question number two, which is who else needs to approve this project? Uh, project approval is the responsibility of the four door reuse authority board, and um, there may or may not be, depending on the alignment and the, and the impacts, a number of permits that might be needed, but that um, is a different question in terms of approval. So four is the ultimate, four board is the ultimate responsibility, uh, has the ultimate responsibility of approving the project. And first one, four seven sunsets. Um, this leads me to my response that for tonight, if we can focus our questions and our energy on environmental impacts and issues, that would be really helpful for our process. Um, what I'm hoping to do is get enough feedback from you so that we get it right the first time. Um, for a sunset, I don't know is the answer. Um, and maybe a for a representative can come around to your table afterwards and, and talk to you about that. Um, so, all right. <laughs> all right, Fred. I hope there are two simple, simple questions. One is when will this presentation be on the web? And the second is um, can we see? At some point, more detail on the screening process you've already done. What were the 41 projects and why were 37 of them tossed out? That, those are great and easy questions. Um, so we'll get the PowerPoint on the web tomorrow. Um, for we'll help with that. And the preliminary project screening analysis, Mary's come over with a hard copy. Um, the desk, the one copy for everybody to look at. But it's also available on the web to anyone. So um, I think. If we could try to get to questions with our facilitators and get the discussion open, I would appreciate it. And then when we get to the end, we're going to break out at about 8, 10, and report out from our groups so we can hear what the other groups have to say. And then we can do a final Q&A. I just don't really want to lose this opportunity to have this charrette. Is everyone ready to move forward? Uh, the, yes, sorry. You said uh, PowerPoint's going to be on the web. I assume all the audio is going to be on the web as well, with it? Um, I'm not audio. <laughs> uh, the recording includes the video and audio, so what we have available will put on the web. So, thanks everybody. I'm going to get to the question and answer on the public comment. Because I think that's, I'm kind of lost now. Okay. So we submitted the forms. We got distracted by questions. So let's open it up for public comment. Everyone get your speakers' cards in, and we'll call you up three at a time to line up, three minutes each, and in a half an hour, about a half an hour, we're gonna we'll break into the shred. And then we'll have time for Q&A at the end as well. And of course, you can reach out to, to myself or Jonathan after this evening is over and ask all the questions you want. So, who do we have first? Okay, I'm going to call up three people at a time. So we have the first three is Thomas Johnson, Brian Nelson, and Brian Nelson filled out two, one speaking as a board member, and one as a homeowner. Hello 
Hello, good evening. My name is Brian Nelson. I'm a board member on the East Garrison Community Service District. That's part of the East Garrison community. I'll be speaking in this first segment only as a board member representing the board at large. Regarding the uh, Northwest Southwest Arterial Connector. This letter has gone to the board of directors, which is the county supervisors, and they're under that Jane Parker's office and her chief of staff as well, and a copy delivered to the four board, which I understand is not all here tonight. The East Harris Community Services District Advisory Committee continues to monitor the different studies, presentations associated with proposed planning of the Northeast Southwest Arterial Connector by Ford or Reuse Authority for it. The reuse plan incorporates several studies in an effort to reduce traffic congestion between Salinas Valley and the Monterey Peninsula through and around the previous Ford or Army base. Four of staff presented proposed Northeast Southwest Arterial Connector during the May 3rd, 2018 Advisory Board CSC Board Committee meeting, and we understand the proposed two lane road will direct approximately 18,500 more cars into Inter Garrison Road each day to ease congestion on the California State Highway run in 68 quarters. According to four websites, since the 1997 Fort Ord Base Reuse Plan, the southwest, south, uh, Northeast Southwest, formerly known as the East Side Parkway Rural Arterial Connector, known as the East Side Road, has been a part of the Fort Ord Transportation Network. The roadway was to connect the Monterey Peninsula to Salinas Valley. The ADT estimated by FORA is eight, uh, eight, 16,520 average daily trips according to FORA's presentation at December 6th. Eastside Parkway community at the present the Road is handling 6,466 as study as noted in the MBEG study. So I'm not gonna read the whole thing, but the board is unanimously opposed to the connection to East Scare Inter Garrison. Um, this letter is on our website, it will also be on the county website, to any connection to the Sherman Road Inter Garrison dumping an additional 10,000 cars into East Garrison community. I can't not read from the letter because that's all my authority has. So, you can also view this. But the East Garrison CSD is absolutely opposed to connecting to Sherman Road in the Garrison. Thanks, Brian. My name is Tom Johnson. I, it makes, as I asked earlier, it makes no sense to me why they won't have this connector, the East Side Parkway, connect at West Camp and Watkins Gate. And as Brian suggested, there's an estimation of between 16 and a half thousand cars a day and 18 and a half thousand cars a day. Presently, we have about 6,500 cars that take East Gar uh, Inner Garrison. And I drive it every day, and I see people come in off reservation roads. Sometimes they stop at the stop sign. Most of the times they don't. And you know. Uh, when East Garrison is completed, we're going to have 1,400 residential units. Let's just assume for the sake of argument, four people per house. That's 5,600 people that could be tremendously impacted on, on this road. Uh, I can expect to see backups on, West, on Westgate where people will be cutting through the private roads to get over to East, East Garrison, uh, Inner Garrison. Um, and presently we have a, a fairly young community. We have a lot of children, a lot of animals, a lot of dogs, and putting 18 and a half thousand cars through West Gate is just going to destroy the dreams of many people who've used their life savings, wanted to get out into a nice area in an environmental area, area by Fort Ord, you know, that's already protected along West Gate because of uh, uh, an endangered salamander. Um, and I just, just speaking from my heart, this is going to have a tremendous impact on people who have bought homes there and had no idea when they bought homes that there was a possibility of having that type of traffic flow through uh, uh, East Harris. I'm extremely concerned for these 5,600 people. That's all I have to say. Thanks, Tom. As an homeowner, in 
going back and looking and studying the master plan for East Garrison, the engineers themselves, these are the traffic engineers, engineered that West Camp, uh, Watkins Gate, Sherman uh, East Garrison, Inter Garrison, would take care of the load that the community, East Garrison community, would have put on Reservation Road. And nowhere, nowhere in the documents for the county did it stipulate that we would dump an extra 10,000 cars on one of those three entrances or exits to the East Garrison community. This plan, the master plan, also included a very important element. And that element is it had to be a net zero effect on the county budget. And each of the homeowners, how many homeowners here at East Garrison in this room? Each of the homeowners have paid for each of the roads, not the county. The maintenance of Watkins Gate, the maintenance of Inter Garrison, and the maintenance of East Garrison roads is solely 100% on the homeowners. Now the county is talking about connecting to the road paid for by the people that bought the homes. In case you don't know it, Melrose tax basically doubles your property tax to live in East Garrison. Doubles. Actually a little bit more than that. The ongoing maintenance of the roads only lands on the homeowners. It doesn't land on the county at large. So not only do we have a traffic impact and congestion impact, the financial impact is borne only by the homeowners. No one outside the community pays for those roads. They didn't pay to build them. They don't pay to maintain them. How would you feel as a homeowner to say, let's hook up another 10,000 cars and we'll maintain those roads for you? I don't think so. I don't think that's going to happen. I encourage FORA to look at the master plan documents, look at engineers engineering for what we have, because it's only supposed to support what we have. Thank you. All right, our next three speakers is Glenn Woodson, Kelly Elmore, and Rolf.
She specifically told us at the meeting that 70% of all traffic coming out of Seaside that currently bypasses Verondo to Imogen or out to Reservation of One is dumping and stopping in the city of Seaside. So that means that 10 to 15,000 of those cars are actually depositing in Seaside, and that's why KMC supports this effort. I find that kind of interesting, and I'd like to see more of this physical transportation statistics. Again, KMC looks at higher level county roads that does not look at the, the mobile roads. Um, hi, I'm Kelly Elmore. Um, I'm a homeowner in East Garrison, um, and I really hate public speaking, so just to tell you, but um, my husband is actually current, currently deployed out of the country, um, and this is really important to him that I'm here. So, um, we we bought a house in East Garrison, and um, a really big reason was because of the green space. Um, and we anticipated keeping that green space, um, as well as the trails in Fort Worth Monument. Um, we, my husband, my son and I, um, used the trails like on Watkins Gate out of um, East Garrison every day um, for walking and running. Um, I'm also the coordinator of a local running club, and we, most of us run um, with strollers. Um, so one of our meeting locations is in East Garrison, um, and we also use that trail from Watkins Gate towards Giggling. Um, we love that trail because there's no vehicles on that trail. Um, it's really safe for us to run there, especially with our strollers. Um, and I just know that we would be really devastated if there was a lot of vehicle traffic on that trail and we could no longer use it. My name is Joseph Gondes. Uh, I represent Sustainable Seaside. I've run many forum meetings, and in those forum meetings, Sustainable Seaside has always opposed the Eastside Parkway. So have the majority, actually a small majority, of the forum board. However, at the last vote, which I was president of the forum board, the forum board took a oral vote. The yeas sounded like this. The nays sounded like this. So, automatically, the nays didn't win. It was not counted by the person. I think they would have lost maybe by one or two votes. I think it's important to realize here that the Florida Board is not unanimously behind the Eastside Parkway. Therefore, this study got promoted and we're doing the study. However, Sustainable Seaside believes that the Eastside Parkway is really a good dog that we have said so many times, and so has Landwatch said this many times. Don't do the East Side Parkway. It's going to run into a lot of opposition. That opposition was heard by the board many times. So I want to represent that opposition one more time that we really don't want to see the East Side Parkway. I totally believe that the integration has a point. So do the environmentalists, and so do a lot of other people. So I really like to just simply say that if we do some kind of road connections, we need to stick with existing infrastructure, take the road through Giggling, which exists, take it through 8th Avenue, which exists, take it maybe over to uh, Reservation, whatever, but use existing structure. Don't create new roads and create impacts on people who don't want that impact. Thank you so much for the comments so far. I'm Kelly, for the record, I don't like public speaking either. Um, I did want to say let's hold our applause to the end and let everyone, uh, give everyone um, all their time and keep it moving. So um, I'll hand this back over to Ashley. Thank you. Okay, I'm just going to call the last four up. Um, Phaedra, Justin, Bethany Schultz, Gary Cordright, and Paula Duncan Adams. Hello, I'm Phaedra Dessen, and I'm a Marina resident. Um, I'm going to get my walk on because I'm from New Jersey and Staten Island. And if you want to know what bad roads can do, where I grew up is just the ultimate 
disaster area, let me tell you. <laughs> think about Staten Island, think about Central Jersey. If there's a place that has green on it, you just pave a road through it. But, um, yeah, this, this is a disaster. There, it's going from two-lane roads to two-lane roads, past residential areas, past through a lot of green space, and I don't, really don't know who in the world this is serving. Um, if you're talking about Salinas Valley people trying to make their jobs in the Monterey Peninsula, please, for God's sake, why don't we expand Route 68? The road is already there. It starts from four lanes across, and it goes into two lanes. Why don't we make it four lanes all the way across in case there is an accident or a pileup or whatever, the road keeps on going. It doesn't go through this area. And um, I'm sure CSUMB doesn't want to expand the roads there. Inner Garrison does not want this. Um, my family, we used the roads there in that area for bike riding. I've seen people out there in wheelchairs with the whole families on giggling and walking gates, mothers and strollers. It is a peaceful area. It is very ADA accessible. Um, we really don't need a road to nowhere bringing more traffic through this area. So um, I think I covered most of this. Um, the argument before was pick your poison. Why do we need any poison at all? So there. Thank you very much. Hi, my name is Bethany Schultz, and I'm a graduate student at CSUMB and in the Environmental Science program. And so uh, we've heard a lot about, um, issue, you know, concerns about the road going through to the neighborhood and um, the home homeowners that are concerned about the increase in traffic. So I'd like to bring light to um, issues of habitat connectivity, since we're talking about EIR. And in my experience with EIR, it's like, Time and time again, I've been disappointed with the biological assessments. And so uh, many times uh, they have not been thorough and they uh, neglect to assess um, certain species, whether it's plants or animals, um, as much as they should. So for example, um, rather than discussing habitat for a group of animals such as bats, let's say, it would be great if you could include actual acoustic analyses. Um, and another thing is when discussing proper mitigation for oak trees, um, often uh, the age of the trees may not be taken into consideration. So how old are these oaks that would be affected? Are they actually heritage trees? And then that actually changes the me measures for mitigation. So, um, similar to other people, I'd also like to see um, cost assessments for how much this parkway is going to cost everyone versus utilizing the existing roads. And so, um, for example, like we just heard about the Highway 68 engine uh, has two, you know, two lanes, right? That also goes to down to one at some point and causes a bottleneck that could be changed and for significantly less money, and it would help improve the traffic on that road. So, uh, that's all for now. Thank you. Hello, I'm Gary Corwright, the uh, current president of the Monterey Auto Cycling Association, MORCA. I'm also a resident that uh, lives in Salinas and has a business in Carmel. And I commute every day back and forth, and I'd love to see something, not this, happen so we have better connectivity between the peninsula and Salinas. Uh, used to be that it would take about 35, 40 minutes to get uh, to and from work each way. Now it's an hour, hour, 15 minutes. Yay for the economy, it sucks for me. So, uh, some of the issues that I see here with EIR so far is uh, that it states the approved purpose of the uh, proposed projects is to make improvements on the on-site former four-door transportation system. And it goes on to say, while maintaining value, recreational, cultural, and natural resources. I'm not necessarily saying that when you're going through the conservation area. And I think that um, 
bisecting that conservation area when you average out how many car trips, uh, was it 16 or 18,000 and a half, whatever, you're basically getting one car every 21 seconds. We know that's not the reality, but you're going to be getting a lot of traffic through there. And we're going to have a lot more roadkill for the California Tiger Salamander and everything else that we're all concerned about. Uh, we're also using, uh, losing loss of access to uh, county uh, trails and connectivity between the county trails and the trails of the Fort National Monument. Uh, I know that our club recently went through a project with the county. We did a large signing project. We put signs up for the trails. We're trying to do the Abbey Court right now. And now it looks like we're going to put a road right through most of those trails that we just outlined. Uh, I don't know if uh, that was taken into consideration or not either. I'd like to see if that was. Um, I've got several pages of other comments that were going to be submitted, but those are the ones I want to bring out right now. And I would also, uh, second, I'd like to see more information on where the, this segment of the realignment is going to go and how is the traffic going to be impacted where it ingresses out on the peninsula. I mean, I, I already know it's not going to be pretty on Reservation Road, but I'd like to see what's going to happen on Highway 1 in that area as well. I'd like to see that address. Thank you all very much. Thank you. My name is Paula Beckin Adams. I live on the Cove, and I've listened to all your concerns, and we're valid. I mean, everyone is. Everybody's concerned about their neighborhood and the things that they love, the creatures that they love. And I'm also concerned about all of those things. And I'm mostly concerned right now about what's going to happen with Cove because. From what I understand, you go up this road being just up the hill, it's going to let out over here. And then what? Because I don't see any connection to all these places that we're supposed to be relieving the traffic. So where are they going to go? They're going to come here. And there's four schools between General Jim Moore and down to Monterey Road to the Fremont exit. We're talking about uh, what used to be called Fitch is Monterey, uh, to the um, Inside <laughs> uh, middle school, then there's the charter school next to it. We have uh, continuation high school, and then the following the high school at the end. And so I'm very concerned because the traffic here is just horrendous. And if anybody's ever bothered to come down here at any given time, just three or four lights if you're lucky. I've had it actually. I've seen traffic stop up to Soper Field over here. And so something really needs to be done. I, and if they're going to be putting, in addition to uh, the, the golf course with the hotels and the timeshares and what, where are these people going to go? I don't see, I don't see what you're doing as helping us. I'm just, I'm sorry to say, you know, I know you're trying to do your job and, and I, I think that you really care, but I just don't see that this is going to be helping us. Thank you. Or if we've got one last speaker card here and then we'll break for the shred. So I'll let a friend come up for a few minutes and we'll break again. Um, I'll give you instructions for the shred and just again a heads up that we, you know, we are prioritizing this shred because comments have until September 25th, but we only have until 8.30. So let's um, focus on that and if we have time at the end, I'm happy to take more questions and take more public comments, but again, let's, let's hear from Fred and then we'll move on to the shred. I think I'm going to echo what Glenn said, which is um, that I think the stated goal of the project reference specifically named the roads, engine, second, reservation, and roads like that. They're beyond the boundaries of that map. So in the government straight, I think I'm going to be trying to think outside the box that this map has put us in. Um, it's striking when I look inside the box that there's not actually a way to draw a line from the southwest to the northeast without going through something green. So we're sort of not given the option to avoid the habitat. Thank you. Goal is to um, 
let us know what should be considered in the EIR, and I'll put this screen back up for you. They will also, your facilitator will have some questions to help to guide the discussion. How are you, dear? Thanks. Um, I anticipated uh, members of the public might be upset about not being able to provide oral comment. But again, I really wanted to make time for this charrette. It was uh, requested by so many members of the public. So let's get to the charrette. And again, we have time at the end. We'll take more questions and comments. So thank you for your support on that. And there in the city, I'm going to go ahead and start the presentation. Uh, or just kind of report on what we talked about. Just, uh, we had a lot of good talking points because we don't all agree. <laughs> but that's fine. So one of the things we all agreed on is uh, it's a good thing to be here tonight. So thank you all for coming. Uh, one question we had uh, that we want to uh, answer is why spend on roads before removing all those light buildings? Um, you know, can we look at uh, maintaining existing infrastructure over the pristine habitat, making sure that uh, we really explore all routes or all possibilities of reutilizing existing roads that are in current use instead of going through the uh, habitat conservation areas. Uh, we want to know what's going to happen uh, to this project when for our sunsets, if and when. Uh, a lot of us, we don't want to pay for the road. We don't want uh, uh, the schools to pay for the road. What's the, you know, we also have to look at what is the construction impact of Highway 68 this, uh, I think it was uh, said that it's looking at 12-year to 14-year projection, putting in all those lovely roundabouts on it. <laughs> <laughs> really not awesome. But we want to know what that's going to, what, what is that going to do to Reservation Road, Engine Road, etc. And uh, it's basically making it untenable. Uh, we got to identify a road with the least amount of impact so that there has to be a road. So some of us want to have a road of some form. Uh, there's concerns about negative impact of uh, traffic increase on your garrison roads, uh, East Garrison in the absence of the uh, northeast-southwest connector. I don't know how far we want to go on this here. I want you to feel like you're sharing the complete story of your Well, story. we're going to try and do that real quick. And I think what we're going to do is recap it. Uh, basically, we, you know, a lot of us, you know, we have some homeowners who live in the East Garrison area. They don't want a road next to their house, which I completely understand. Uh, but we don't know what the impact of not having a road there is going to be for the inner garrison corridor either. We want to make sure that the uh, whatever route is decided upon, if there is a route, that it does take into consideration the uh, recreation, uh, allowing for underpasses, overpasses, or something, then separate uh, greenways to allow uh, uh, wildlife uh, migration between one side of the green space to the other, essentially, uh, making sure that we do actually avoid uh, being within a quarter of a mile of any of the uh, ponds or vernal ponds that might have or do have uh, California tiger salamander populations. We also want to make sure that uh, Strava, which is a, uh, an app for tracking your exercise, be it uh, running with a stroller, running a horse, being on a bike, running, walking, whatever. It tracks you and you get to upload your event for uh, your, your route. And what we have is a cloud, we, uh, as somebody that's really a lot smarter than I am at this stuff, put together a, a heat map which shows the intensity of use in certain areas over a certain amount of time. And all the little red squiggly lines on there, all the trails being used, that big black line in there is the one uh, going right through some very heavy red areas. So uh, there's a lot of use and looks like the proposed route at this point would be uh, bisecting that area. So we want to make sure that uh, that is taken into consideration and uh, what the actual current routes are for recreation. Uh, did I miss anything, guys? I think the, the idea, if we're going to have a new road, improving it dramatically with proper trailheads. Right, right. And that's, that's the thing, too, yeah. Making sure that we have real trailheads with, you know, toilets, uh, facilities. We don't want it to be like what happened over at Anza Drive where people were changing and 
the middle of the street, disturbing the, uh, uh, the population there, uh, defecating, urinating, you know, people's side yards, etc. We don't want that. We already see that in some of these areas out here, like uh, General Jim Moore and some other places. We want to see some real facilities put in when the road is put in and make sure that there are provisions that it must happen, not that it might happen. And there was an alternative that was voiced uh, that might be looking at if there is going to be a road, cutting it short through the uh, north habitat uh, sex, uh, section, kind of uh, into block. Into basically into trying to, yeah, basically kind of going north of the travel camp, you know, northwest, kind of cutting up and over. Through in a garrison and kind of back out over towards the reservation, uh, very close to Blanco or something like that, in between the CSUMB property and in a garrison. So it's kind of a, a little bit of a compromise. There's not as much recreation happening there. There's not as much connectivity right now with the habitat because the inner garrison is fairly well used at this point. Anything else? Okay. I, I think we're good. There's everyone else yeah. has other ideas, so we'll just move it on for the sake of that. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. Discussions. And just, um, I'm going to summarize. I'm not going to read all of these off, but I will flip this and you can read it yourself if you like. And it'll be on the video later. So, uh, okay. So, Ashley's holding a map up, and I'm going to refer to that, but I also need to flip this. So, uh, let's say that environmental issues and, and their impacts that concern this table mostly were about biking and hiking, primarily. Um, for youth camps, day camps, events, and for families interacting with nature there. You're hiking and biking, and they're primarily hiking and biking in this area where you see the green polygon. So that's the um, travel camp and the habitat corridor HMA. Uh, so they've had a lot of concerns about that, and in fact, although we, we shifted to design features, they said some design features may help, such as bike facilities being separate from the roadway. Other, other um, things just, it wasn't something that could be solved within the design of the roadway. It was more like try to stay out of there. So uh, also there were wildlife impacts, and particularly in that area as well, um, there was a lot of concern for uh, wildlife passage and suggestions for design features, such as underpasses for the wildlife it was a particular term, like a grade instead of fencing. Grade below the roadway instead of doing fencing for wallet. Okay, I'm gonna put this. And um, one member strongly was in favor of adding another alternative into the analysis, and that is shown in um, this map in bright green. So it's, sorry. <laughs> It would be to come around on reservation, go down the inner garrison, and then along the inner garrison road, and then continue on the yellow. So that was an idea to avoid a lot of those impacts, and the suggestion was very strongly felt that it should be added back into the alternatives. Okay, so oak impacts, so there was a suggestion to narrow the roadway as much as possible, even if it means getting rid of the bike lanes that are within the roadway that would be anticipated in design. So it can be as narrow as possible. But reducing the size of the shoulders, so it could be as low impact in the oaks as possible, and also planting oaks as much as possible along the roadway. That was suggested along MPC, particularly to screen the views of the road along the MC, MPC development, and um, up along the north as well. So I think that mostly it's what we talked about. Does anybody want to pipe up and remind me of something? Like tech preference. Fort tech preference. Yes, and definitely we wanted to protect the Fort Ord um, recreational trail and greenway crossings. That's all. Thank you for the lively discussion. In fact, maybe even a couple of discussions at each end of the table. And I also will summarize the comments. And I know my group will make sure that I've caught all of them, but they are all written down on the um, flip chart, and we will be providing these to the environmental consultant. So I'm going to characterize these as habitat. 
we had multiple issues about protecting the flora and fauna and concerns about adequate protection, not just of endangered species, but all species, roadkill, what will increase traffic uh, due to our flora and our fauna. Um, safety concerns, and there are multiple ones, we said in a lot of different ways, but I'm gonna characterize them as safety. To hikers, to bikers, and to event participants, and others who are out there using the recreational um, facilities out in this area, the trails and um, that. Big category was the economic impact of this road and what it has on the East Garrison residents, um, and that's multiple impacts to house and property values, to increases in the Mellow Roost tax caused by increased traffic on not only the East Garrison internal roads, but the ones that are crossover roads that are affected by this roadway alignment. Fair, fair capture? Mm -hmm. Good. And um, finally, I think the, one of the biggest things, and we have two, two additional potential alignments that are along the same lines as um, Table 1, is improve the existing roads. See what we can do to reduce the impacts by using our existing roads improve MGEN to four rate lanes. Um, why did we do roundabouts on Highway 68? Our efficiencies have decreased with the use of roundabouts, and you know, wouldn't we be a lot better off if we simply just four-laned Highway 68? Because that would help traffic move on Highway 68, need goes down for a, a third route across um, Ford Ward. And finally, that leads to some of the alternative alternatives and the alternative is to improve, basically, and I think both sides of the table concurred. Start at Giggling Road is the start. Go along 7th and through Inner Garrison. Coming out on the uh, north side, or the west side, I should say, of Schoonover. So somewhere in that northern habitat management area. A couple of different alignments. One hugging the blue area that's shown on your map and one kind of swathing across uh, that habitat, that green habitat management area to connect to Reservation Road. Um, the thought being that if you four lane that road, the connection to Reservation Road would be a lot less impactful. It would improve the existing roads and use the existing roads. Um, finally, trash management increased litter and that relates um, in part to one of the biggest concerns at this table is fire danger and the increase to not only the local residential community caused by fire, but to our habitat and our area, our very dry area out there in the monument. Did I miss anything, guys? And I think that last point's really important uh, with your present plan. I mean, once, I mean, this is virgin, all of us have been out there. I mean, this is virgin territory, and it's really, it's, it's really brown in some areas. And one cigarette out, you've got a forest fire. We've been lucky in this area that we haven't had it. California's burning down. We don't want to create any type of a, a, a new system that could create forest fires. Thank you, Tom. Anything else? I think that's it. If I'm missing any, uh, please let me know, table members. But we listed here as concerns. We have wildlife impacts. The proposed way, roadway would by seven uh, the wildlife corridors. Um, there is also concern that the EIR should evaluate species of concern, not just endangered species. Uh, also concerns were the effects on trees for the proposed project, trails, wildlife, that roads encourage development of open space and the roads uh, destroy the regional park aspect. Additional concerns included the proposed road will cause increased traffic in seaside neighborhoods. Uh, that there will be impacts on trails, children bicycling, habitat, and facing more traffic. Uh, that we should focus on safety of trails. Uh, there are concerns about habitat, wildlife trees, and concerns we should widen engine parkway. Concern about lighting for the roads, for the safety, uh, for people and for animals, and then that there also be that the lighting be properly. Uh, implemented so it's not creating light, light pollution, but it's appropriate. Uh, concerns about the wildlife that under, wildlife underpasses or overpasses uh, could could help with uh, creating or keeping uh, some borders going. Uh, 
Other concerns were that it's better to preserve the open space, uh, to use existing structures. Uh, concern that for a work with TAMC to widen Highway 68. Concern that more roads uh, in development, uh, the more we have roads in development, the less we have ecotourism. Okay, and then about design features that could reduce impacts. Uh, the group uh, put out there that wildlife overpasses and underpasses could be a design feature that could help bike, line, bike lanes and sidewalks. Uh, would also be a design feature barricades and roundabouts, street lights, uh, and avoid using stop signs. And then trail access could be designed into uh, a proposed roadway. And then we looked at alternatives. So uh, alternatives to the proposed project, uh, one was widen into parkway, Another was to use existing roads, reservation road to the Garrison to 8th Avenue to Giggling Road. Uh, another alternative was using existing roads is 8th Street to Inner Garrison. Another was to widen Highway 68 to four lanes. And then another was uh, public transportation improvements, such as electric, electric buses. And additional alternatives were to change the work hours to lessen the peak time traffic congestion. Uh, another was to have affordable housing near the job centers. And is there anything else from your bike we may have missed? So. Pass on to the next group. Good evening. Uh, it's 5 I'll be a summary for us. My notes are not as organized as, uh, as Jonathan's and everyone else, so I might skip around a little bit. Start with the concerns. Uh, we had concerns with conflicts with trails and cars. The island of trails at Inner Garrison Road uh, between the new proposed roadway and Inner Garrison Road. Uh, we call it the HMA Island, Habitat Management Area Island, uh, restricting access from the north towards the south. Um, and the project should provide safe access. Uh, there's existing youth camp events that should be considered. And uh, getting back to the north south habitat corridor, uh, roadway uh, bisecting that could undermine function, especially in new payment. We have concerns with added traffic at Cove, uh, currently a disaster that's mentioned here, especially because of the small schools in that area, in this area. Uh, 218 traffic with General Jinmar Boulevard, and uh, South Boundary Road back up in the morning as well. Uh, and we, uh, the Fort Worth National Monument access uh, should include trail parking, Concerned about future seaside east traffic and will increase the general general load of our traffic. Uh, come back to these alternatives in a second. Uh, we have some ideas to consider here. The types of crossings of the new roadway crosswalks are not enough. Under overpass would be better. Linkage of the National Monument and the cemetery with regional roadways should be considered. Signs from the highway. What trails at the focal point? Uh, four tag formation, perhaps uh, there are some changes to the concept of alignment of four tag. And the four recreational trail greenway concepts need to be considered. Uh, we need to stay away from vernal pools, importance of those. And the habitat management plan vision, uh, the youth camp area uh, for camping uh, need to be coordinated with this road. And the TMC multimodal corridor alignment. With this road, whether it ties in or modifies it, it makes its way uh, around reservation, East Garrison, uh, and east to west, or from Salinas to Grand. Uh, also, concerned about ridge lines. The, while you're in the National Monument, the ridge lines protect you from the outside world, and roadways should stay on the other side of that ridge line to maintain that field. And uh, as mentioned, habitat feels the impact from development. So some of the alternatives we were discussing, uh, if work had to be done in this area, in this corridor, uh, the alignment uh, the option was considered inner garrison to eighth to gateway. Uh, the other tables mentioned this as well, kind of a modification of the blue and the yellow alignment, if you will. <coughs> we have the alternative of blue to orange. So as you make your way uh, on Inner Garrison Road, uh, west to east, you transition onto the orange alignment, so say south of East Garrison, to uh, take it south of where the blue alignment is currently shown. Uh, and, and 
CSUB, skirting the uh, CSUB area, which is, sorry. I'll take it back. I'll hold it for you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Which is right here where we have uh, the parking and the um, solar panels. So just traveling up here, cutting out through the engine might avoid all of this. Avoid, and the mail on yeah, the goal was to avoid everything moving. Especially this. Through this area. Concern with keeping the areas wild by limiting access. Limiting access. Um, we also had another concern brought up about improving Highway One from Castroville down and how that could alleviate traffic on some of these other roads, and potentially using a moving K rail during high traffic areas to increase lanes um, for rush hour traffic. So. Um, there was concerns about potential fire due to vehicular traffic through that wooded area. Um, some questions came up about why the road needs to connect to eucalyptus when the connection engine was removed from the original plan. Um, can the road start at Gateland? Why is it near Garrison to west border of East Garrison for preferred alternative? Uh, why is there no alternative through CSUB? Uh, is there an alternative that could follow the border of CSUB? So basically the overall thought from our table was we don't need a road through an area that isn't our, doesn't already have a road, but we need improvements on the road that already already exists. Does that encompass yes. good? Okay. Yes. All right. Thanks. I'll go get this car. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Thanks. I want to hear other people's ideas and concerns, and so I just wanted to reiterate the public comment period on the scoping. So this is, again, the first process is um, those comments are due by September 25th at 5 p.m. Again, you can submit comment cards today. We received some oral comment today as well. If you want to email comments, we have a connector at fora.org specifically to, to um, answer questions, to provide information, and to accept comments. You can also snail mail. And the address
address is there below, and that's Jonathan, the, the prime contact at Fora, who will be uh, interfacing with you. Um, what else do I have to say? I, I just really wanted to, I've done a lot of these, and I'm truly impressed with everyone who was very respectful and courteous and providing a lot of um, good ideas and also a great turnout. A lot of people wait until the end of the process and it, it, it really makes the analysis easier on the front end if we can get as much input as possible. So this was um, very beneficial and extremely uh, successful in, in my opinion. So I hope you all feel the same and I see um, this gentleman over here with a question and it's 829. So I'll allow one final question and then again comments are not closed at any point right now or questions. It's just it's 830 on Thursday night and we're ready to go home and, and start again tomorrow. So let me take some questions. Yes, we saw a tremendous amount of overlap between all the tables here. Could you quickly just describe if there was any overlap between us and the previous session? Oh, that's a great question. So uh, whether there was overlap between the comments here tonight um, versus last night's scoping meeting. And yes, very similar comments, very similar. Um, I think a lot of people are on the same page. And you also did remind me um, that will be on video as well if you want to watch that presentation and see what those um, groups recorded out. Those will be available. And again, all of these comments, so I have to close out demands from you all. Please do not take the large mass. Please leave your comments because we want to be able to document them. Uh, we printed those 11 by 17 color copies. Those can be yours to take home. But please leave feedback so that we do receive it. Uh, and again, this will all be compiled in the EIR. And just my whole thought is that we're required to address environmental topics in the EIR. We'll be tracking them. We're going to summarize them. They'll be in an appendix in the EIR. They'll be noted in each topical section. So we hear you. We appreciate your feedback. So thank you all. Have a great night.